Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, before I do this video today, I just want to say um, a big thank you for all of you who have encouraged me over this 30 day challenge. It's been amazing. I'm not going to lie, it's getting tougher to produce quality content. But with that being said, welcome to Wedding Tip Wednesday, but on a Friday. With wedding season of 2019 kicking up, one of the many challenges that filming weddings is the backlog that can pile up pretty, pretty fast. Especially if you're like me and you have a day job and you film weddings. But that's not my only problem. Commercial projects pop up, church films um, get behind, they get delayed, and they those have a definite deadline so I can't put those things off. The worst it's ever gotten was three years ago um, when I didn't know how to say no or truth is, I didn't really want to say no. I wanted to film as many weddings as possible. At one time, I was 17 weddings backlogged. I filmed 38 weddings that year, plus my job at the church grew and my responsibilities. I changed my contracts to say it would take six to nine months instead of the one to two months that um, I originally had in there. In fact, my contracts still say that because I believe it's better to over deliver on expectations. So here's some tips that, that I use to get me out of that wedding backlog. One of the things that really helps me is to take it in pieces. For example, I don't like putting pressure on myself um, because that really turns into stress. So instead of saying today I'm gonna get a whole film done or I'm gonna get this whole film done in four hours, I like to break it into small pieces. For example, I will organize the footage into folders import that footage and then seek it up the natural audio parts such as like the first looks the letter readings um, speeches ceremonies and that's it then i take a break i give myself a break to play with my kids hang out with my wife um, maybe work on another project um, go out and play golf whatever it is i just i give myself a break either a small one or a little one depending on what's going on for the day then i will jump back in the edit Tell myself I'll watch the natural audio part so I can get a feel for the day. I'll mark my favorite parts that tell the story. And then I'll say I'll do the prep part of the film. So I'll do all the bride prep and the groom prep in that one sitting. Then I get up, do something else. Then I jump right back in. I do the ceremony. And sometimes doing the ceremony can take a while because I want to put some of the pastor's message or the homily from the priest. And I, I want to get the vows just right. So I do the... I do the ceremony part, drop that in to where I had the prep. Then I break, then back to do the formal reception stuff, like the full dances, the party footage, you know, stuff like that. Then I break again, and then I get back in, and then I find romantic moments for the intros. I search for music at that time. I use Musicbed. Um, this year has been great for Musicbed because they actually have a um, license program where it's a subscription based and so if you're a wedding filmmaker I want to say I paid close to $700 a year for licensed music when I was paying $50 a song and some of my feature films which are 13 to 16 minutes sometimes would take six to seven songs so I love music bed so I'll take time during that time to search for music I may use Artlist or Soundstripe, but most of the time right now with my subscription, I use Musicbed. It has been a huge payoff um, and it saved me a lot of money. Then I break and then I come back and the last part is the color correcting. I put a grade on it. Now the most important part, I let my wife watch and critique it. I find that, that she sees stuff that I don't see, especially with color grading. We know that women see more colors than guys. And so, I'm, so she watches it, she critiques it. Um, even in fact, she told me one time to, to cancel it and to re-edit the entire thing. She said there was no story. It didn't really tell the emotion. And so I re-edited a film and then once she approves it, we like the color, then we upload it to MediaZilla. And if you're not using MediaZilla, um, I highly recommend it. Again, it's expensive. Um, I don't even know how much I pay. I think it's $400 a year, $350 or something like that or maybe even 500. But I love MediaZilla because whenever you burn standard definition DVDs, I just think they look terrible. Plus Apple does not really support the DVD burning anymore. I used to have DVD Studio Pro or, I'm, um, or iDVD, 
but it just is not very good. And so I like Mediazilla. I send that to the client. They can actually download each film to their own computer or um, they can save, uh, make their own account through Mediazilla, a free account and save that DVD or that collection onto their account. So if I ever delete it, they can always have it. And so I think Mediazilla gives me one terabyte for the year. I mean, one terabyte storage. And so I love Mediazilla. Now, I don't always put that many breaks. Sometimes I will say I'm going to do this and then I break or I'm gonna do this and this. And so I don't have to put that many breaks, but sometimes that's what it takes for me to get the wedding film done. As wedding people, we know how long it could take to produce a great wedding film that not only impacts the couple, but also impacts the people who are watching online who don't even know the couple. But true time to all of us editors, it wouldn't take as long if we would just shut down every program on our computers that didn't pertain to the edit and also put our dang phones down or take them out of the room. Most of us, um, we start to edit, then we think about our, uh, our YouTube comments or Facebook comments, and so we check them out on YouTube and Facebook, and then all of a sudden, two hours later, we've been watching YouTube videos or chatting online or whatever else you do or playing a video game, whatever it is that you do online, Two hours later you get sucked in and now we say we've been editing for so long when truth is you've probably only been editing for 20 minutes and you spent two hours watching videos. Now we know it really does take a while to make a great edit, especially if you're telling a story. If you're telling a story about the couple, it can take a long time. So challenge time. Put a timer on yourself. See how long it really takes you to edit with no distractions. If you break or you get up, stop the timer. And then after you're done, add up the time when the project is uploading and see how much time you and me really waste when we were editing. So guys, I really hope that this helped you because if you're like me, that one year when I had the 17 weddings backlogged, it, it caused a lot of stress on my life. I was down to one wedding. My goal is to do a wedding a week. That is the goal. Um, but in order for that to happen, I have to get out of my wedding backlogged. My, um, the way I set up my wedding filmmaking is I will film a lot in one space of time. I did 10 weddings in eight weeks and then I don't have another wedding. I have a wedding this week and then I'm off for like a month and a half. And so I put big long breaks and if I can make myself edit and get rid of the backlog and my time off, I can get to my goal, which is doing one wedding a week. How awesome would it be for the wedding couple to actually get their film before their pictures? That is a goal that I want to do in 2019. But in order to do that, I gotta stop talking about it and stop the distractions and get on to editing and just get it done. So guys, I will see you tomorrow. On to the next one.